guys welcome back to my channel my name is Erica and today I'm going to be doing my very much long awaited library haul so I have these books for a while now and it's just been a rough couple of past weeks I had a couple of health scares and it kind of affected me where I couldn't really just sit down and film stuff like this for you guys and at this moment I am doing very good and hopefully I can be more consistent with my video uploading and getting content out for you guys but I haven't wanted to film this for a while and I just really wasn't able to do it but I'm doing it now which very, makes me very happy so let's just get right into it so the first two that I have are classics the first one is Frankenstein by Mary Shelley and the next one is Dracula by Bram Stoker. I checked, no, I didn't check it out. Yes, I did. I got this book last October, and I never finished it. And I wanted to go ahead and just get it done because this is a book that I have been wanting to read for a while now. And um, I never read these in school. I don't know why I would even read these, but um, I never read them. And I just want to go ahead and just get it. It's very good. I really wasn't expecting it to be as good as I thought it would be. Um, I didn't think it would be this good. It is told from um, like telegrams, diary entries, letters, um, stuff like that. So it's not written as, you know, regular novel or book format. And it's it's good. That's all I want to say about that part. Of course, you all know about Dracula. The only thing that I will say, though, because it is a classic, is that um, the writing is kind of overwordy in some parts. But it's okay because I knew that going into it, especially reading a classic, but Dracula, if you have not read it, get your hands on it because it is so, so good. Um, Frankenstein as well is a little bit shorter. I wanted to read this one for a while now and I never read it in school and I don't know why I never picked it up before. But um, yeah, it's very short so it's very um, quick to read. I will say it's not as easy to read but um, it's still very good. This one um, is told like regular format of course but like I said with, with Dracula it is kind of wordy, but you kind of expect it, you know, with the classics and whatnot. But it is good. I do recommend you read it. You all know about Frankenstein, so I really don't need to get into it all with this one. The next book I have is Midnight Crossroads, and this is a Midnight Texas novel. The TV show of season two is coming out in a couple of days, and I cannot wait. I cannot wait. I cannot wait. The first one was so good. I hadn't even read the book. So, I'm going to give you a synopsis based off what I know from the TV show. It may be a little bit different from the book. I know it definitely starts off very different um, in the book than it did in the movie. But I'm pretty sure that it's kind of along the same lines. So, there's this town called Midnight in Midnight, Texas. And it basically has um, these occupants that live here. They are vampires, shapeshifters, psychics. Um, assassins and a little bit more I can't remember but there's a little bit more to pe the people who live there and of course I think there are like regular human beings in there but the, for, what, for the most part it's people there who own oh, angels it has angels but for the most part it has people of supernatural ability living there anybody who really doesn't fit in or conform to the normality of the world that's where you will find them at. The story starts off with Manifred who moves to Midnight, Texas to basically escape his past. His past is kind of catching up with him. Um, there is someone after him and his grandmother who is dead. But his her ghost lives in the RV where he lives and she's tethered to the RV. And so because he's a psychic, he can still communicate with her. And she convinces him to move to Midnight, Texas where she says he'll be safe and when, once he gets there he automatically knows that this is where he belongs but also at the same time he doesn't know the exact reason as to why his grandmother told him to go there of course he'll be safe and he'll be around his own 
but um, he doesn't really know exact reason why his arrival there kind of offsets a lot of prophecies, a lot of secrets that had to be unveiled, and the only way it could be unveiled was with him being present. This is a really good story. Um, well, based off the TV show, so far I do love it. So far I have started this and I do love it. This is a great found family book. Um, if you love anything dealing with supernatural type of stuff, this is one for you. I have not read her um, books based off the um, with the Slicky Sack House books, The True Blood. I haven't read any of those. This is my first time reading a Charlie Harris book and I absolutely love this. Like I said, I cannot wait till season two come out and hope that I can have this finished before season two come out. But this is a very good read for fall, um, especially around this time of the month. But I do recommend you get your hands on this if you can. And also watch the TV show because the TV show is super good. The next two books I have are part of a series and I only have the first two. But the first one is called Pucked. And the second one is Pucked Up. And both of these are by Helena Hunting. And I have read her books before. And um, most of her books, well, all her books are dealing with hockey players. And I'll try my best to kind of explain without giving so much away. Because with these contemporaries, you can only say so much without giving the story away. But this story follows Alex, who is um, the sister of a famous hockey player. She goes to his game, and of course, to her, most, well, no, not most, all the hockey players there are very nice looking, and one stands out to her the most. And during the after party, he obviously noticed her, and he kind of goes to her, and they hit it off fairly quickly. Of course, her brother doesn't like it, but still, she does her own thing. She's a very loud, very rambunctious, and robust person, and she... It's kind of like her way or there's no way. And so, of course, she doesn't listen to her brother. And she still goes to see um, the hockey player that um, she was interested in. And when they hit it off really nice. And after that, they had like the little one night stand. She thought she was rid of him. But he wants, of course, more. And that's pretty much all I can give you with this. And like I said, it's, it's about hockey. And there is full of drama. Most of her books are full of drama. And, um, yeah, it's really good. And also, with the second one, I think this story covers her brother. Next book I have is, um, The Dead Sleep by Heather Graham. And I haven't went through the Heather Graham novel for a while. I mostly read YA and new adults. I'm trying to get into more adult fiction. And so, uh, we have all of her books at the library. And it's just so convenient. So I just decided to go ahead and pick this one up. I do not know a lot about this. All I know is that it has, it's set in New Orleans, which I love anything set in New Orleans. Like if it, anything set in New Orleans, I will read it, point blank. It has the voodoo, of course, and it has ancient evils. It has secrets of life and death. It has all the stuff that I am there for, and it's set in New Orleans. So I can't wait to read this. Um... I'm, actually, I'm very much looking forward to reading this. It's, as soon as I get done reading Midnight, um, not Midnight, Texas, Midnight Crossroads, I'm going to dive into this because I, it's set in New Orleans. <laughs> so it's probably not a good reason to read a book because it's set in New Orleans. But we're going to go with it because it's set in New Orleans. The next book I have is A Dreamfall by Amy Plum. And I have read um, her Remnants Chronicles before this is when I first got into reading and um they were so good and I know she had another series that she written but I didn't get I didn't read those this book is actually for a job in the librarians which is next Tuesday at um 6 30 central 7 30 um eastern standard time and I'll also have it linked so uh you'll be able to Check it out if you would like to. But this story follows, I think her name is Katta Cordova, I believe. Her name is Katta Cordova, and she suffers from a very, very, very bad case of insomnia to the point where she agrees to go through this experimental procedure. She thinks everything is going to be so much better, but in reality, it's not. She and six other teams are thrown into a dream world where it is literally a life and death 
where their worst nightmares come to life. And if they die out there, they die in real life. And they're trying to uncover like everything that's coming out with the secrets that all of them have. They're trying to basically survive and get out of there because if they don't, they're basically stuck. So that's the majority of what this is about. I hope this is good. It sounds like it's good. Uh, this is also my pick for the month. So I'm really hoping that it is good and I can't wait to read this as well. This book I have is Joylin by Stephen King. And I know I've said before that I can't get into his writing. And this was the book that I started to read. And I really just believed that it was the moment and the time. It just wasn't the time to read it. And I started back reading it. Um, like I said, I checked this out before, like earlier this month. And I do enjoy what I'm reading now. And um, I just was in the mood for a good thriller. And um, I thought what person better, what author better to start with is Stephen King. Because I don't read a lot of thrillers. And I didn't really know where to start with with this one. And so I just picked it up. It's not long at all. It's like um, a little over 200 pages. No, no, it's not under. It's like right at almost 300 pages. But that's like okay. Um, but yeah, so far I have started reading and I do enjoy what I have read. But this story follows Devin, who is a college, yeah, Devin Jones, who's a college student who works at a carney. And when he gets the job, he is basically facing, um, murder, a dying child, and let's see what else, fate of a dying child, and a truth about life and things that would basically change his world forever. I do know that he's, I think, 60 years old and he's telling his story. And even though the synopsis is kind of vague, like, being a Stephen King, there's so much more to it. Like, I know there's more to it. So that's kind of what's keeping me with reading this, um, this story. And like I said, I do enjoy it a lot. So that's all I have for my library haul number three. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you read any of these books, comment down below and let me know what you thought of them. If you liked this video, please give me a thumbs up and also subscribe and be a part of the Biblio File Maniac family. And I will see you all in my next video. Bye!